Hey friends, so I was browsing X and I came across this tweet by Chase Lean where he was showing these super cool button animations he created with AI. He goes through the whole process in the thread, but then he laments that he wishes he could make them into real buttons. And so I thought, why not? So I'm gonna walk you through his process quick and show you how to turn them into real buttons in your website. The first thing you're gonna do is go to the App Store and download the Remix AI Image Creator app. This is the one that he used to generate the buttons and it seems to work pretty well. It gives you 30 free images a day. And from there, you can just go from text and type in your prompt. We're gonna use a high quality flat vector illustration of a glowing power button with sparks and blue lightning black background. Click done in the upper right, then click this other settings icon in the upper right so that we can set the aspect ratio to square. Now click generate. You may have to re-roll a few times, but you should get something that looks kind of like this. Once you find one you like, hit loop and it'll make an animation out of it. Then just hit share to send these to your desktop so we can turn them into real buttons. I want the animation to be our hover state. So that means we need a static state. So let's open up the image in Photoshop and I'm just gonna use generative fill to remove this watermark. Then I just do the shortcut shift command option E to make a flattened layer of the entire document. Then I'm gonna use the lasso tool to make a rough selection of the button. You can use any sort of selection approach you want with this, maybe a marquee would be better. But we're gonna hit command I to invert the selection and choose generative fill and hit generate. I got these which I can work with by just selecting them and adjusting the saturation and brightness. You might want to just specify black background in the prompt that might work better initially for generative fill on this. One other change I want to make is I don't want it to be glowing in the default state so we're just going to reduce the saturation. And then we're good to save this out as a JPEG. Next I'm going to do some pretty light editing of the video just to make sure that they line up exactly and to remove the watermark. So we're going to do this in After Effects. I'm going to drop in the static image and then also drop in the video. So we're going to make a comp out of the static image since that's the size we want to base this off of. You'll see the video is a little large. I'm just going to reduce the opacity of it and then scale it down to make sure that they line up. Once that looks good, we can go ahead and trim the comp to work area just so that we have our full video. And then we're just going to clean up that watermark with a mask. And then we can go up to the composition menu and say add to Adobe Media Encoder queue and export it as an MP4. I'm actually going to start by asking Claude to create a web component for me that has a video element in it which animates or plays on hover. Then I just copy and paste it into this JavaScript file. Make sure to isolate all the JavaScript since it gave me all the HTML. And then we're going to add it to our root HTML file, as well as be sure to include it in our JavaScript. So now if we just update our path to include our video file, we should get our video rendering in the HTML. For some reason, the styles that Claude gave us in the web component are a bit wonky, so I'm just going to remove those and it should show our video. So right out of the gate here, you can see it has the mouse over events so that when we hover over it, it'll play the video and when we go outside, it'll pause. So that's a good start, but let's go ahead and add our static frame to this as well. So I'm going to create an image property, which just specifies the path to our static image. Then I'm going to create a new image element, which utilizes that source attribute. And we're just going to basically toggle the visibility of this based on the hover state. So I also want to create a wrapper container element that I'm going to place both the image and the video inside of so that they can be positioned correctly. Then I'm going to adjust the CSS sum, making the container relative position and then making the image absolutely positioned at the upper left. I just had to fix one little typo up here and we should be good. Now we can size it however we want and the video and image will be the size of the container. Now we're just gonna add some CSS so that when we hover over the container, the image's opacity will be set to zero. 
that works pretty well. So now I'm just gonna add a 0.4 second transition to the opacity on the image element. Cool, that feels a lot better. So one other thing you just wanna make sure of is that you set the video loop to true. This way it won't pause while you're in the hover state. So I hope this was useful just to show you how you can take these animations and UI elements that you create in AI tools and bring them to life in your websites. And shout out to Chase Lean. Be sure to follow him for creative AI inspiration.